Michael McGob, my friends. I'm here to talk about anthrax. Um, a weird history with anthrax. There's, I own everything they ever released except I never got the last one. And I'll talk about the last one though. I have heard it. But I have everything else. Uh, every release. And I got a bunch of singles too. And I want to show them with you. So the first thing I want to show you. This is how I discovered anthrax. This is a metal compilation called Metal Hammer. That is probably my favorite metal compilation. This is how I discovered Anthrax. There's a lot of bands I discovered because of this album. Um, I didn't discover Merciful Fate or Metallica that's on here uh, or Raven but pretty much everything else. Oh and The Rods and The Exciter. Those are the bands that I didn't discover on here but you know I'll read off the, the whole thing. It has uh, Merciful Fate, Evil, Raven, Mind Over Metal, Venom, uh, Poison, Satan, No Turning Back, Thunderfire. I love Thunder. I discovered them on here and I got the album the Thunderfire album which is awesome very obscure band very killer band um, Cloven Hoof, Crack the Whip, Metallica Motor Breath, Tokyo Blade, If Heaven Is Hell, Rods Born to Rock the live version the Rods Live is an awesome live album uh, Battle Axe Running Out of Time, Exciter, Exciter, Sons of Satan and Ending It, Anthrax, Metal Thrash and Mad and I heard this as well as Thunderfire and a bunch of other ones and I had to go get it. So I did hunt down uh, Fistful of Metal. I don't have the original anymore. I do have the original CD that's signed by Neil Turbin. And I have this really odd, let me show you this, album. This is uh, Anthrax Fistful of Metal with the Armed and Dangerous EP. And I'm gonna show you, uh, it's pretty cool, man. It has like a cool collage in here. And uh, I love this album. I, I think this is their best album. This is my this is my favorite Anthrax album. I'm a big fan of Neil Turbin, and this is my favorite Anthrax album. And then Neil Turbin's out, and also um, Dan Lilliker. Dan Lilliker left the uh, was kicked out of the band before this album came out, but he played on it. But Frank Bello joined the band, and then they got Belladonna and the Raise That Raise Hell EP is awesome, but. Then, uh, let me go through the tracks here. Death Rider, my favorite Anthrax song. That song rules. Metal Thrash and Mad's awesome. I'm 18, I didn't like. That, that covers whatever. Panic is awesome. Subjugator is awesome. Soldiers of Metal, badass. Death from Above, probably my second favorite on here. Uh, Anthrax is song, Across the River and Howling Furies. That's a uh, Fistful of Metal. Then Armed and Dangerous, you got the Armed and Dangerous uh, song, which is different than the Spread the Disease version. It has like this pixie dust kind of intro to it that the uh, um, um, Spread the Disease didn't have. Raise Hell, awesome song, could have fit perfectly on um, Fistful of Metal. It would have been awesome if Raise Hell was in instead of I'm 18. Would have been all killer, no filler. Um, God Save the Queen, uh, uh, Sex Pistols uh, cover, Metal Thrasher Mad and Panic with Joey Belladonna, and a couple demos are the uh, rare track, Soldier of the Metal and Howlin' Furies with Neil Turbin. All right, that's that. Then they released this one. I absolutely love this album. This album is all killer, no filler. Every song, AIR, Lone Justice, Madhouse, uh, SSC stand or fall. SSC stands for suck some cock. I kid you not. That's what it stands for. Um, the enemy screams in the night. Um, Aftershock, Armed and Dangerous, Medusa's awesome. Johnny Z wrote it. And Gung Ho, probably the fastest Anthrax song ever. And uh, they see uh, Fistful of Metal. It was kind of like there. You know, there's hints of thrash because they. They discovered Metallica because Johnny Z brought them to New York, and but this uh, that album is more traditional metal with dashes of thrash. This one has more hardcore elements because they were really into the New York hardcore scene, and you know a little thrash and some traditional metal like The Enemy and uh, uh, Medusa. Great, fantastic album, and uh, this right here is the 30th anniversary edition which I highly recommend it brings like a bunch of bonus stuff you know and you know as raise hell and stuff like that but I used to have this on CD 
the original CD pressing, it was horrible. It was so low. I always hated it. This version's awesome. They fixed it up. All right, now between the next Anthrax album, they recorded this. And this, to me, is better than any Anthrax album. My opinion. Stormtroopers of Death, I already did an episode on it, so if you can see, you want to see what I think of it, there is an episode I did just on this album, and the riffs on this album is better than every Anthrax, Anthrax riff, if you ask me. All right, then, all right, here's the thing. A friend of mine, we were talking about this album, and he said, you need to make a video about Anthrax, because it's really interesting, your view of Anthrax, because... We were talking about, they have this uh, thing on YouTube that they're, it's a documentary they're spreading out that's really good. And uh, this album here, I like about half of it. This is the one everybody points at. It's the best Anthrax album. Not for me. I mean, I love the title track. I love Caught in the Mosh. I love NFL. And I love Skeletons in the Closet. The rest, I don't like. I Am the Law. The musically it's really cool, but I don't know, man. You won't fuck around no more in the whole Judge Dread thing. I, I just find it silly. Um, Indians, I like War Dance, that part. But the rest of this, One World, Horror of It All, don't care for. And Imitation of Life, which was originally Aren't You Hungry from S.O.D. Then M.O.D. re-recorded it. Different music, but same lyrics. And, but here it's like they changed the lyrics to Aren't You Hungry and it's the worst song on here. We love you, babe. It, it annoys me. Anyway, I like the releases they did before it more than that. And I know that's the one everybody points at. Uh, this, uh, the Indian single. And then this right here. This is interesting. The I Am The Man. This one exploded. This was like a big hit for them. And I remember hearing this first on the Metal Shop because this was originally a B-side to I Am The Law. And I remember hearing it, and I liked it in a novelty, jokey sense. I love the fact that they mentioned El Duce from The Mentors, because back then, man, it was really, you know, obscure. It's still obscure now, but not as much as it was back then. And little samples of, like, Master and Puppets and stuff. Uh, it's cute. It's funny. It has a cool version of Sad Boy Sabbath, which is on this one as well, and Tame. Um... But yeah, it had some live stuff, but you know, whatever. All right, then, Stay the Four. Now, this one, it was disappointing. Um, and this is when they were at their biggest. They were right on the heels of Metallica. It was Metallica, Anthrax, Slayer, and Megadeth, in that order, which soon will change. Because Anthrax ended up at the bottom, or Megadeth and Slayer got more popular than them. But this one, they complain about. They say that it was rushed and they had to go on tour with Maiden. And, uh, but it does have its moments. I do like uh, Be All End All. I like Antisocial. I like Now It's Dark. And I like the deep track, Schism. Um, I had it on CD. And correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure this came out the same day as Injustice For All. Because I remember getting this and Injustice For All on compact disc. My buddy Jason from Miami Metal Merchant was selling this, and I saw it while I was flipping through his albums. I said, you know what? I like a few songs. So, having not heard this in forever, I bought it, I put it on, and then I discovered I really liked the Out of Sight, Out of Mind, the second track. But, my God, Make Me Laugh is terrible. I hate it. Who Cares Wins, I don't care for. Misery Loves Company is forgettable. 13, what the hell's up with that? Yep, yep, yep. And Finale, I know a lot of you love Finale. I don't like it. Well, I also have this here. This is a nice fucking EP. And, and backwards. Penecou Fessin. Um, this has any social sung in French. Because Trust is a French band. And Joey Belladonna is sung in French. It also has Now, and Dark, now It's Dark. Friggin' in the Riggin' the Sex Pistols thing from... Uh, Oh, what's the name of that movie? The Great Rock and Roll Swindle. Parasite is on here. Sex and Pipeline. I like Pipeline a lot. And Parasite. Good cover. And I also have this one. It's the same cover, but it's different. This is uh, any social single that brings Parasite and Lissex. Lissex, I believe, is another trust song. All right, then. See, after I was disappointed with that, and they were really big at this time. I remember 
seeing interviews with Antox saying, we're never going to take the, you know, we, we avoid the satanic imagery and we find it goofy and stuff like that. I remember reading in magazines and I even saw an MTV interview where they're talking about how the satanic image is like whatever. And uh, so, fast forward, they got a lot of shit for this with the shorts and being all happy and stuff that they w went back in the studio and they did a real pissed off album. Now, I was really looking forward to this one because they're pissed and I was disappointed with State of Fear for Euphoria and not the biggest fan of Among the Living. So I was hoping a return to form, something pissed off like the first two albums. So they released this and I'll never forget when I bought this. I was with my friend Paul and Paul, pretty much me and him felt the same way about Anthrax. So we were very excited about this and I'll never forget getting to this house and we pop it out. I'll never forget Paul said, come on Anthrax, don't let me down. We listened to it and it let us down. And I really tried with this album a lot. I've listened to it a lot, even recently, and it still doesn't do nothing for me. You know, the cover of Got the Time I liked, and I liked the instrumental to Belly of the Beast, but the rest, I know a lot of you love this album, and, and the band itself loves this album. I found it a, a big disappointment. Then, I also got this right here, which, oh, what's, what's in here? I guess we have a single or something? Uh, oh, this was a record store day thing, which is any social and in the end. Um, remember Eagles Lost in the 2015 Paris Attack? I don't remember if I listened to this one, if it's live versions or not. But anyway, I have that, and, oh, what do we have here? Uh, oh, this is a flyer for Volume 8. I'll talk about that later. Anyway, so yeah, this is a, from a college radio station I used to be a part of. Um, this is the Got the Time uh, single from For Only College, where I had Frankie, Scott, and Charlie sign it. And I also got, and this is also signed by the band, the Time single, which it has this track. It's a Japanese single. And it has this track on here called Who Put This Together, which is kind of like a, I don't know, it has the NFL riff and you hear Dave Mustaine talking and it's just like this, like, I don't know, some weird mixy thing. I'm sweating like a dog here. All right, let's go. And then they released this, Attack of the Killer Bees, which is, you know, it's just a compilation, but it has like SOD covers, uh, Keeping the Family Alive, Starting Up a Posse, which is funny. A funny tune. Protest and Survive is pretty cool. Chromatic Death, another SOD thing. I'm the Man 91, Parasite, Pipeline and Sex, which was already on this. Belly of the Beast Live and this ballad called Night's nice Fucking Ballad, which is so stupid. I really don't like it. All right, and I also got the Bring the Noise single, which has, what does it have? Keep it in the Family Live and I Am the Law 91. And then Joey's out, but they released this. This is a live Island Years, and it's kind of forgettable, but I did hear this a couple weeks back at a friend's house. He had the CD, and he put it on, and I was like, that's all right, it's not that bad. I didn't listen to it much when I bought it. All right, Joey Belladonna is out, and they bring in John Bush. This album is awesome. I would put this as my third favorite. Fistful of Metal, Spread the Disease, and this one. This album, I don't think there's a bad song on it. Um, the only thing I will complain about, and it's not that big of a complaint, you know, Black Lodge, I dig Black Lodge, but this single here has this mad, what is it called, like a cello mix, uh, black string mix is it? I can't remember because there's three different mixes on here, but it's one that starts very eerie, I think it's the cello mix. Much better than the album version. I love this. Um, but this album, man, Potter's Field is probably my favorite. Only Rules, Room for One More, Package Rebellion, High Pro Glow, Invisible, very heavy. Thousand Points of Hate, Sodium Pentothal is badass. Um, uh, Burst, This Is Not an Exit, Noise Gate, and Bordello of Blood makes no sense. Noise Gate does make sense because it's kind of like a, was a single, and uh, 
I mean, a B-side for this album, but Bordello of Blood wasn't released until much later. It was a song that they recorded for uh, Tales from the Crypt movie. One thing I, now, you know, I forgot to talk about this. The first time I saw Anthrax was spreading the disease tour. They came down here, they played a place called Archstock's Playpen, which was rare, and it was awesome. And then I saw them on Among the Living, and I got a flyer right here that it's my friend's flyer, not my flyer, I took a picture of, where it was Exodus, and uh, Celtic Frost, and the Pandemonium and the Pleasure of the Flesh tour. It was badass. And uh, all right, now let's get back to the current. So I also have, and one thing, man, Anthrax released amazing B-sides with John Bush. Amazing. Like this one here. Uh, what's the B-side on this? This is the High Pro Glow London, which is a Smith cover. Probably my favorite cover, except. I put it tied with the Thin Lizzy uh, Cowboy song cover that they that's on this only single, which also brings an amazing version of uh, Off Vita Saint from Cheap Trick, really badass, and of course Noise Gate, which I talked about, and also brings the only remix. Then I have this one, another Black Lodge, which I had some people sign it. I can't remember. It has uh, some. Uh, Weird mix to uh, Potter's Field and Lover All I Can, the Kiss cover. Really good cover they did. All right, then they released this. Soft 442. Um, this was a downgrade. I mean, it's got its moments, though. I really love Random Acts of Senseless Violence. It's awesome. I like Fueled. Uh, In a Zone is cool. Nothing I like. Drop the Ball, that middle section. Bam, bam. Um, is awesome. Tester is awesome. Bear. Now that's a ballad. Fuck that Killer Bees ballad. I love that ballad, Bear. It's amazing. And then it has Grunt and Click, which is a B-side. I, I don't even know if it was for Stomp. It probably was. And I got a bunch of Stomp singles here. This is, uh, and again, Killer B-sides. This is for Fueled. And on here you got Watching You, the Kiss cover, really good. The Throne Emperor, Celtic Frost, Celtic Frost. Really, really killer. And Grunt Click, yes, it was during that. Then Celebrating Summer, which is a Husker Du song, and No Time This Time, which is a police song. Cool stuff, man. And then I got the Nothing single for the song Nothing. And this one brings uh, Remember Tomorrow, awesome Iron Maiden cover, and Grunt and Click again. And Fueled, the Fueled single, which is, uh, what's, what's it got on here? Uh, watching you and celebrating summer. Right on. All right, then they released this one right here, Volume Eight. This one, yeah. I mean, I like Crush. Catharsis is cool, uh, and it's a weird song which is kind of countryish. I really like on here called uh, Toast to the Extras. I dig it. I dig the song. Um, and that's about it. Uh, fat, big fat, and 604, kind of like an SOD thing. Very short songs, funny. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of a disappointment. Didn't really care for it. I don't know if it had any B-sides. I'm not sure. Then they released this right here, which is Attack of the Killer A's, which is um, uh, a, a best of. But it has like a re-recording of, uh, not a re-recording, yeah, a cover of Ball of Confusion, which is John Bush and Joey Belladonna together. Now, when I met Anthrax on the Volume 8 tour, I gave John Bush this shirt right here, as you can see, because he's a big Bon Scott fan. And then that was during Volume 8. Then when they were doing this, and they were planning a tour where both singers were going to tour, it didn't, didn't come to fruition. But here's a picture of John Bush with Joey Belladonna wearing that shirt I gave him. Pretty damn cool. Anyway, this is just uh, Greatest Hits with... Uh, uh, it has the Potter's Field remix, but everything else is the same except for... You know, oh, High Pro Glow remix too. Uh, but Ball Confused is like the only new song on here. All right, then they released this right here. Uh, we Come For You All. Better than Volume 8, but still. Eh. I like What Doesn't Die. I like Refuse To Be Denied is cool. Uh, Nobody Knows Anything. Uh, Cadillac Rock Box. It's got its moments. Roger Daltrey sings on... Oh, he screams on taking the music back on here, which is interesting. I am sweating. It's hot 
hot here. I don't want to put the AC on. Um, anyway, it's okay. It's like whatever. And this is the last thing, the last studio album they record with John Bush. Uh, and then they released this live one, which also brings a DVD. It's cool. It's um, with John Bush. And this was um, uh, that tour here would come for you all. And it brings uh, the CD and, and it's called uh, Music of Mass Destruction. It's all right. Then the last thing they recorded with John Bush was they re-recorded a bunch of their old songs. And it's not bad. I like it. I mean, uh, is it better than the originals? No, I guess I'm too biased. But, you know, it's got three bonus tracks that weren't on the CD, like uh, Anthrax, Lone Justice, and In My World. All right. Now, so, oh, yeah, something I forgot to mention. Um, the... the uh, what do they call it? The Pentathrax. Now they're showing, now they're using satanic imagery. Shit, there's even Satan on the cover of this one. So yeah, they changed their tune on that. But anyway, that's that for this. Then John Bush, uh, they reunited Anthrax and they released uh, a live album with uh, Belladonna back in the band and Dan Spitz. Didn't work out. They went back to Bush. Bush was like, I don't know, guys. But he did end up doing some shows with them, but as far as him wanting to rejoin the band, they wanted it bad. But John Bush at the end said, you know what, no. So I prefer John Bush and Armored Saint. In my opinion, Armored Saint is a better band. In my opinion. All right, now we're going down to the last two. Uh, Worship Music. This is Belladonna's Return. Now, this album was recorded with a singer called Dan Nelson. Dan Nelson was in the band, but here's a rumor I heard. I don't know how true this rumor is. I think there were a couple things leading up to him getting fired, but the final straw, this is just a rumor. I read this online. Dan Nelson took a shit on Frank Bellow's back while he was asleep. I don't know how true this is, but I've read it from different sources that say that's what happened. That's what got him kicked out of the band. I wish somebody would ask Anthrax this, but he did record this album and then they erased his vocals and they brought Joey Balladonna in. And I understand they did rearrange a couple songs here and there. But I would like to hear the Dan uh, Dan Nelson version. But Worship Music, yeah. I liked um, The Devil You Know is cool. I like Fight Him Till You Can't. In the End is a good song. But I, I really didn't care for the rest. All right, this is the last thing I got. And I bought this on Amazon, and somebody, they sent me this, but this was, I don't know if you can make that out, from the New York Library. Somebody stole this from the New York Library, ended up on Amazon, and ended up buying it. This is a covers album, and Anthem from Rush, great cover. TNT is whatever, Smoking is awesome, a cover of Boston Smoking. Keep on Running from Journey, really good, I really enjoyed it. Big Eyes! really did disappoint me. I love Cheap Trick. I'm a big Cheap Trick fan. I love their version of Off Beat of Saint. And I know they recorded it with Dan Nelson because I remember reading that in a magazine when he was still in the band that they recorded some covers and that was one of them. And Jailbreak from Thin Lizzy. Eh. To me, Anthem, Smoking, and Keep On Running are the highlights on this. Now that's it. I didn't get the last one. It's called For All Kings. Or I know there's some live ones and DVDs and what have you. Um, but I heard it and I did, I do this podcast called the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast with Ian Wadley, who's a bigger Anthrax fan than me. And he ended up disliking that album more than I did. I found like two tracks, I remember the last track I liked, whatever it was called. And there was a, another song, too. like, I like like three songs, just like worship music. I like like three songs off it and the rest was Ian, where Ian Wadley, I don't think he liked anything off it. If he did, maybe just one track which is wild, but that's it, my friends. That's all I gotta talk about with Anthrax. You know, I was saying before how they were getting big near Metallica, but by the time Persistence of Time came out, Rust in Peace and Season of the Abyss were doing much better business. So when I saw the Thrash of the Titans tour, it was Megadeth Headline and Slayer, and then Anthrax. Now I know they switched it up during the tour, but I know I was there that Megadeth and Slayer were doing better than Anthrax, so they kind of dipped. And I think it had a lot to do with State of Euphoria. 
And Persistence of the Time, even though a lot of people love it and the band love it, it didn't really help. It's Rust in Peace and Seasons overtook it. Oh, a couple other things. Funny stories on Anthrax. How I, I met Frank Bello, and he wanted a ride. He was waiting for a taxi to go to the mall. And uh, me and my friend George said, come on, we'll take you. And while we're driving to the mall, Scott Ian and Paul Crook were walking down the sidewalk. And Frankie said, slow down, slow down. And he rolled down his window and he yelled, homos! And then he hid in the back seat. And they both looked around and they saw me and my friend George. That's a funny story. And, uh, you know, Joey Beldon is very nice. Dan Spitz is really cool. He moved down here for a while. I used to see him at shows. He was a nice guy. Um, Charlie, I met him. I, I can't say he was a dick, but, you know, he really was like, you know, at least he signed some stuff. And I'm kind of shy. Scott Ian, always a prick. I don't know, man. I know some of you may have met him and he was nice. Maybe you're on a good day, but I kept meeting him on bad days to the point where last couple times I seen Scott Ian, I wouldn't even go up to him. And I'll tell you a story about Scott Ian was um, a friend of mine, a little kid, man. I mean, he's grown up now. He was back in 2010. Did a meet and greet. And they, they, they came out. I saw the little kid and his dad. They were telling me how shitty it was and it was terrible. And then Scott Ian came out and the kid's dad walked up to Scott Ian. And I'm right there when this is happening. And he's kind of like telling Scott Ian, man, that shit sucked and blah, blah. Telling him, you know, how displeased he was on the meet and greet. And then Scott Ian, I shit you not, Scott Ian said this. Well, I don't mean to be a dick, but you're talking to me now. I swear that happened. I have proof that happened. He's a prick. And then when I was on the motorboat, I noticed something I noticed about Scott Ian. He really loves celebrities and musicians, you know, because he, you know, this is before the whole white power Phil and Selma thing where he kind of like said shit about Phil and Selma. But on the ship, the motorboat, he was kissing his ass and Rita from uh, uh, Dimebag's girlfriend and there was a few other people, Skolnick and stuff like that. He's lathering their ass. He's all nice to them. So we were at a birthday party. I can't remember whose it was. I think it may have been Mike Portnoy. I can't remember. And it was on the motorboat. And he's there talking to Mike Portnoy, like lathering his ass. He all smiles and shit. And a fan goes up to Scott. And Scott really, I mean, his demeanor changed. And it was like, this guy was just bothering him. And he's like, yeah. Then the guy leaves, because he got the hint. And Scott went back, hey, hey, hey. And I also want to bring up the fact that VH1 had this special called Badasses in Metal, and it had like Lemmy and Dio and a few other people where, you know, you had all these people talking about, oh, Lemmy was a badass because of this, Dio was a badass because of that, all these different musicians. And then they said, all right, here's a segment of Scott Ian being a badass. And the only person to say Scott Ian was a badass in that, um, in that episode was Scott Ian. I consider myself a badass because this and that. It was like, really? Whatever. Anyway, that's it. That's all I got to talk about. So, uh, uh, Frankie was cool. Joey was cool. Oh, John Bush. I met him so many times. That guy's the shit, man. He's super cool. Armored Saint rules. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. If you'd like to donate, I got a PayPal below. And Scott Ian loves his fans. Not smack him a gob. I just never understood why Scott and Charlie were so douchey to the fans. But that's their <laughs> thing. And I complain about how they treat their fans because their fans are online complaining that they get shit on by these guys. And I did not have a good time knowing Scott and Charlie on the road are who they are. Scumbags. End the fucking story.